Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, December 3rd. December. I was just getting used to October. I liked October. Anyway, it's December 3rd. It is a rainy, cool day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Not too cold, only in the, actually getting to the 50s. I think 51 is going to be our high today, but raining cats and dogs out there. Rained yesterday too. Not a, not a pleasant weekend, but we're having fun regardless. So I have, uh, this is a Phil Rivara uh, Appley pipe. I don't actually know. I, I call it an apple. And it's got some haunted bookshop in it, but that's just a temporary holdover. We, we've got a main event coming up. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of Phil, Phil has a couple of really nice pipes available right now. Uh-oh. If you've thought about getting one of Phil's pipes, this is a good time to at least look because he's got, I, I think, three of them. Uh, and one is this really beautiful Christmas theme pipe that he made. Anyway, um, I'll put a link below to his uh, Etsy shop where you can you can see them. Uh, even if you're just curious to see them, they're, they're beautiful pipes. Phil, Phil does really nice work. And uh, yeah, he, he didn't ask me to do this or anything. I just thought it would be... Uh, nice to make sure that people know he's he's got some pipes available um i like phil he's a good guy anyway <laughs> on to the main event so i have been looking for many many years <clears throat> for a christmas tobacco uh, a christmas aromatic and this is stupid for many reasons and and i never claim to be smart but Reason number one is I do not like aromatic tobaccos. I've very rarely found an aromatic tobacco that I can tolerate. And I've got a couple. I've got uh, Autumn Evening. I've got um, that Honeydew Vanilla from Dan Tobacco, which is a really nice blend. Um, and that Nutty Irishman is okay. Uh, it, it's not in the same category as those two. It's a little bit less pleasing in my mind, but I can I can smoke it. But if I smoke one or two bowls of that a month, it's that's about all I ever want. And uh, I don't know if they disappeared tomorrow, I'd probably be perfectly fine. So why do I do this to myself? Because what I do every year is I say, oh, I'm going to find that. And I, I, sometimes I'll choose like three different uh, aromatic blends and they're always awful. Sometimes I'll choose one or two and uh, or just one uh, and, and it's still awful. I have set on a couple of tobaccos that I do think of as Christmas blends. So one is the, um, I always forget if it's Germain's or Goweth. I think it's Germain's. Um, well, I'm going to get a plum, plum pudding. Plum pudding. Am I remembering this wrong? So there, there's a McBaron blend that has the same name that is awful. Uh, it's, just, it's a lot of Kia blend. And then there's this, uh, I think it's Gawa, uh, Germain's rather, which is a wonderful sort of spicy, um, like baked goods, spicy kind of uh, blend. And it's all natural flavoring, so it, the, the chemical thing doesn't bother me. Um, I really like that, but it's really hard to get, so I rarely smoke it. Uh, another one is Cornell and Deal's Black Frigate, which has that... It's, it's a lot of Kia blend, but it's got a really nice rum topping on it, and it's got some plummy flavor to it, and it just, just makes me feel Christmassy. Uh, and the third one that I enjoy, oddly enough... Uh, was introduced to me by my buddy Couch, uh, and that is uh, Kendall Cream from, I think it's it's Galleth. And that is an interesting blend. And, you know, it's funny, given the past couple of weeks, Lakeland sort of experience I've had, that I would even say Kendall. Uh, but Kendall Cream is, is, is a really nice, very creamy, sort of vanilla-y kind of... Uh, flavor, but with some really good Virginia tobacco underneath it. So I like that one too. And, and that one's just kind of special to me. It's not, there's not really anything Christmassy about it. I just, I just enjoy it. 
and it, it's special because my buddy gave it to me. <clears throat> so, yeah, those are three that I consider Christmas buns. And then I've tried a whole string of them. I've got videos on it if you, if you care to find out, if you care to look back uh, at Christmas tobacco attempts, and none of them have really worked out well. For a while, I thought the black spice was going to do it, and eh, I just got bored with it. It's it's very monochromatic, uh, and I didn't get a lot of. I didn't get as much flavor out of it, and as, as I continued to smoke it. So, what I did was I swore this off. I said, "That's it. I got I got these three. I'm good. I never need to think about this again." And then I was, you know, it was the whole Black Friday sale thing, and I was stocking up on Haunted Bookshop, and I saw this, you know, ad for, uh, it's hard for me to even say this, Sutliff North Pole Peppermint Mocha. I read the description, and I thought, oh, what the heck. <clears throat> Actually, I put a little more thought into it than that. My thought was... Mint is a very dominant flavor, and I know it doesn't seem like a tobacco flavor, but it's dominant, and it's also pretty cheap to get mint and mint extract. It's probably more expensive to make a synthetic mint, and I'm really sensitive to the synthetic chemical flavorings, so I thought, well, maybe this will be natural mint, and maybe it will be so dominant that it'll swamp out any of the other chemical flavors that I am annoyed by in aromatics. Maybe I'll be able to enjoy this. So I bought myself one ounce of Sutliff North Pole Peppermint Mocha. I got it right here, the label tour when I opened it, but hopefully you can read that that is indeed Sutliff North Pole Peppermint Mocha. And this stuff is interesting. I'm going to put the on a bookshop down now. Um, it is undeniably minty. I mean, it's like eye-watering mint. Um, you can smell it right through the bag. It's, it's an amazingly intense mint flavor, mint smell. And there is a, there, there's, there's a little chocolatey vanilla underneath that. And actually, this smells very much like one of those um, thin mint candies or maybe um, a peppermint patty candy, something like that. So I'm going to load some of this up in my uh, trusty old cob here. Because while I'm going to tell you this isn't terrible, I don't want it in my <laughs> in my briar pipes. Let me load it. Uh, I'll show you the tobacco as well, but let me let me just get some in the bowl here. It is uh, a blend of uh, Virginia Burley Black Cavendish, mostly Black Cavendish, and then lots and lots of toppings. It is moist, uh, wetter than I would like, but it's not so wet that you have to dry it out. It's not dripping wet. The tobacco itself, this never works well. Hopefully you can see through the bag enough. Yeah, it's it's a nice dark tobacco, mostly black cavendish, um, sort of chopped up ribbon cut. Nothing special. What you would expect from a Sutliff aromatic in terms of the leaf and the packing and all that kind of stuff. Um, boy, is it minty! I mean, just drawing on this without lighting it, I I'm getting all kinds of mint flavor in my mouth. Um, which is odd, because I don't expect to get that through a pipe. All right. I have to keep reminding myself not to retrohale. The initial light and the, and the flavor I'm getting is mint. Um, almost like cough drop level mint you know it's it's like or, or, or Vicks vapor rub or something like that and if you retrohale it's very much like inhaling that Vicks vapor rub
and it will clear your sinuses. Um, this would be this would be a great blend if you have a cold. It'll cut through pretty much anything. It's a little hard to get lit as well, so. Now I suppose you could try drying it, but I didn't want to lose any of the aromatics for, for this uh, impression video. Boy, that's a lot of mint. Um, there is a little cocoa-y chocolate, like milk chocolate, not dark chocolate. Probably because there's some vanilla in there as well, and uh, it's 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 very much in the background. I'm gonna poke this a bit and maybe try another lighter because this is not not getting lit as well as I'd like. Zippo was sputtering a bit, so. Oh, there we go. So the mint is like super dominant when you first light it. And then that mocha cocoa flavor starts to come up, but it's never, never a big player. And there's absolutely no tobacco. Uh, no tobacco flavor. So if you're looking for tobacco flavor, this is this is not your blend. Uh, but the interesting thing for me, as somebody that cannot tolerate that chemical flavoring that is in almost all aromatics, is that the peppermint really does seem to blot that out. Um, it might just be because it's so dominant. It might be that it's actually anesthetizing my taste buds and, and therefore I don't have to deal with it. But I can still taste the chocolate. And if you do retrohale this, your sinuses will explode with min menthol sort of... Uh, sensation it's not it's not a bad thing but it's not it's not something i want to do every other puff you know you know i just did a little bit of it and it's, it's tingling my nostrils uh in terms of the room note this this was interesting so by the way this is i think the fourth bowl of this i've had um i smoked one right when I got it, because I wanted to get the missus opinion on the, the room note. And that was interesting because she, my wife is a pipe smoker's dream because she does not notice tobacco at all. With very few exceptions. So I'll smoke something different and I'll say, you know, what do you think of this? And she'll say, is that haunted bookshop? You know, regardless of what it is. There are a couple of exceptions, like she cannot stand Kroner for some reason. If I if I smoke Kroner, she throws me out of the house. So it's not that she's not sensitive at all. It's just that she, for some reason, has this sort of it's all tobacco unless it's Kroner kind of <laughs> kind of smell uh, when it comes to tobacco smoke. So I lit this up, and she's sitting across the room from me. We're watching TV or something, and she goes, "Oh, what is that?" And I told her, and, and she said, it, it smells like it, like somebody's making hot chocolate. And she said she liked it. So, there you go. Now, as the bowl progresses, and I'm not there yet, but as you get like to about the halfway point, that mint flavor starts to recede a bit. It never goes away, but it definitely recedes, and you get a little bit more of the chocolate. which is nice, but unfortunately it doesn't last long because by the time you get to about the three-quarter point, it becomes very ashy. 
And uh, I don't think this is one you're going to smoke all the way down. At least not one that I'm going to smoke all the way down. So, in the world of tobacco, is this good? No, it's 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 not. It's actually quite awful. Uh, not that it's unpleasant, it just doesn't have any tobacco flavor to it. But in the world of aromatics, based on my personal experience of aromatics, I know there's folks out there that love them, but I can't smoke them. <clears throat> this is a star in the world of aromatics. And in, when I put this in with all the other attempts I've had at finding some Christmas aromatic... Uh, this is a winner. You know, this is this is definitely a winner. Now, would I buy a pound of it? No, I, I wouldn't. Uh, it's not something I'm going to want to smoke at all, other than a few bowls around Christmas, and and just for fun. You know, it's not. I'm not going to keep a jar of this. Uh, you know, next to my table at Christmas time or anything like that. It's just a, it's a novelty. But the mint thing is, is rather interesting. And I might get some of their frosty mint. Uh, just to, just to try the next time I get a cold. It would be kind of interesting to see what that's like. Yeah, so there you have it. Um, Sutliff North Pole Peppermint Mocha. Not the worst thing I've ever smoked, which is saying something. Because I smoked that awful Lakeland stuff. So, you know, <laughs> it's not worse than that. No, honestly, if, if you're an aromatic smoker, I think I think you'd enjoy this. It's it's unique and different and definitely holiday themed. If you're somebody like me that wishes they could enjoy an aromatic but and, and doesn't mind that it's not really tobacco, um, it's more like a vaping experience, I guess. I've never done that, but um, you get all the flavor, but you're not getting any tobacco taste. If you're like if you if you think you'd enjoy that, it's probably worth a try. But as my buddy Doug Owen put it on the live stream on Friday, he likes his Christmas tobacco. He he he's going to try a Christmas tobacco with with a with an interesting unique flavoring. I forget exactly how he put it. Uh, it's going to be tobacco flavored, and you know that's that's fine. I I get it. Most of my Christmas tobacco will be tobacco flavored as well, but something different, and I thought you'd enjoy it, or enjoy hearing about it at any rate. It does pair well with coffee. It does not pair well with uh, dark chocolate stout, it turns out. It wasn't horrible, it just wasn't great. Oh, one other thing about this, it, it, while the, the mint sensation is really intense and it feels like I just ate a peppermint, it doesn't last. Uh, so it doesn't ghost your mouth. Uh, and so far it hasn't, well, I can't say for certain it hasn't ghosted a pipe, but I don't think it has. Like I've, I've smoked other things in this pipe and haven't noticed like strong mint flavor. So yeah. I found a Christmas aromatic I can smoke. Woohoo! <laughs> I should get out my little woohoo guy and, and run him. Uh, all right, so what else is happening here? It's raining, so I don't know what's happening. I got all this stuff I got to do outside, and it's raining. I haven't even put up Christmas decorations. And my wife just bought new lights for the front of the house, so I got to do that. Um, 
she bought a ridiculous so we had colored lights she didn't like them and she bought a ridiculous number of white lights now uh, which means you're probably going to be able to see the house from space or sit out in the middle of the street and read at night anyway i'll uh I'll take a picture of it in all its glory and let you know how it turns out. She likes it. She likes Christmas decorations. Other than that, what's going? Oh, I changed the belt on my lathe yesterday. Uh, it was starting to squeal, and it turns out it was actually very stretched out. I, I, it did need to be replaced, but boy, that turned into an ordeal. Um, it was. It was basically easy, but there's this little sensor that, that counts the revolution so you know how fast the lathe is running. And the way that's mounted, you have to be a contortionist to get your hand up inside the headstock and hold it in place with a little backing plate that has threads in it and then get the screw from the other side to line up with all that. And, and there's two of them. And oh, and, and at the same time, it has to be positioned uh, in the correct place so that it, it, the spindle is the indicator is rotating through the sensor and I probably got it on four times but it was on the wrong side of that and then I finally got it right I don't want to ever do that again but it's running well and I have been making more tampers I don't know why it uses up the scraps. A couple of interesting ones that you might want to see. This is white oak, which uh, yeah, actually turned out better than I thought it would. I've not really been a fan of with working with oak because it's very, it's a large pour wood, but that's pretty nice, I think. And then I tried to ebonize one. which just sort of accentuated the grain a bit. But, I don't know. I don't know if I'm such a fan of that. And then just for the heck of it, for comparison, this is this is cherry. Probably have seen this one before. I haven't made that many tampers since last week. I think I made three. Three or four. So this is also cherry, but this is cherry with that same ebonization process. And I'm surprised that it actually ebonized so much. I mean, this almost looks like ebony. There, there are spots where you can definitely see the cherry coming through. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting that, that that worked as well as it did. Actually, if you look right in this area here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that in that light, but there's a fair amount of the cherry coming through. So, yeah, just having fun, you know, just having fun. Oh, and this is the last Bacote tamper I will ever turn. This is the first one that I turned um, that I showed you probably last week because I still have spots of... <laughs> I think I had some chips caught under my watch, which is why this is so bad, but this will not go away, and it's really itchy. So, yeah, Bacote is not on the list for future tampers. Or anything, really. I, I don't want to ever see the wood again. But that's been fun. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, I have probably taken up enough of your Sunday. I'm going to smoke this for about ten more puffs and then empty it because it's going to start to get ashy soon. But I will, uh, I will wrap things up then. So, Sutliff North Pole Peppermint Mocha. I think you should give it a try. I really do. Again, I'm not saying it's the best tobacco I've ever had, uh, but it's it's an interesting take on a Christmas blend. I'll put uh, the link below to Phil's uh, Etsy page, so take a look at that. Uh, 
I, I wish I could buy that Christmas pipe. It's beautiful. But someone will, and uh, I'm, I'm glad someone will because it's, it deserves a good home. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back with live stream on Friday. I'm looking forward to that. We've got Santa Claus coming up. Uh, interview with Santa Claus coming up, not this week, but I think the following Friday, maybe. Maybe maybe it's the Friday before Christmas. That's got to be at least two weeks. And so on. So, have a great Sunday. I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you again very soon. Goodbye now.